other people to the Christian lifestyle. Go and make disciples. We may not hear that because it's shopworn. Go and make more and more mature followers of Jesus. That's another way to understand it. And today we do a refresh. We do a reload of remembering of how, how we believe we're supposed to live this out here at Grandview United Methodist Church. And it's that image of a hospital ship. So remember, it's refresh, reload. It was a year ago when I came home from annual conference, annual conference, which is where I was last Sunday. I was not here. I was down there with Mandy. Mandy, raise your hand. Mandy represented us down at the Iowa Annual Conference, the United Methodist Church. Also, Jeannie's here. Jeannie's from Rockdale. She was at the Iowa Annual Conference. I don't think anybody else was down there for that wonderful August meeting. Uh, but we were there. We did the work. It's legislative work, but there's also inspiration there. So I came home last year all fired up and pumped up, and I did the same this year. And I re realized that it's been a long year, and I needed to reintroduce, reload, refresh that call that I feel God put on my heart to say to this church a year ago, and that is that God designed us, church, to be in motion. God designed us, God called us, God's intention is that we move. We just read it, go says Jesus. Not go and make yourself a nice building and when it's convenient, see if you can go by. He said, go and be, be, be busy. We are the hands and the feet and the face and the lips of Jesus Christ. If we aren't, who, no one else will. We, meaning all of us who are united in communion, the billions of people around the world who call themselves followers of Jesus, Christians, we're supposed to do something, get our hands dirty, amen? And that's what I need to talk about. That's what I need to refresh our, our, our memory about. We are called to be both. We are called to be both a port, a port, and a ship, hospital ship. Hospital ships are designed for one purpose. They are designed to go to where the hurting is. That's what we need to remember. Our church here, we are thought of as both a port and a ship. And you know what? That's biblical. It's biblical. That's not just my idea. That's not just something that I came up with. I'm not that smart. I'm not that clever. It's not just a clever idea. We have always been called, church, to be a boat, to be a ship. It started, it started with when, when, God, um, when God's people were on a big boat for 40 days and 40 nights. Some of you know that story? That's where it started. Now, you can believe it's a fairy tale if you want. want. I don't tend to believe that. I don't choose to believe that. I believe that God put God's people on a boat to rise above the killing waters. It was on a boat. It was there that, that God did this. That was the first boat. And understand what this boat, that's just an artist's rep representation, just so if you're thinking maybe somebody took a photograph, that's not an actual picture. Okay, there wasn't some other guy out there taking, okay. <laughs> Let's understand what this was. Part of what this first boat was, was a place of safety, a place of refuge. Fair enough? Makes sense? It was a place of safety. It was a place of refuge. It was a place to float above the killing waters. That's what that was about. It was a boat. And my speech pathologist's wife made sure to remind me not to slip into my southern Iowa, Southwest Iowa way of speaking, and leave the T off that word. So I'm going to try very hard to get the T on there, okay? Amen? Otherwise, you're going to say, he kept talking about a bow. <laughs> a bow. Boat. All right. That was, the, that was the first boat. Here was the second one. This idea that we are called to be a, a hospital ship. God replaced the wood and tar boat with a flesh and blood boat named Jesus Christ. You think it was some coincidence that he walked on the water? Uh-uh. You get the connection? Jesus became the next place of safety and refuge. Jesus became the next boat, if you will, the next hospital ship of flesh and blood. And the Bible teaches us, and our Christian faith teaches us, that those who abide in him... Those who make his, their home in him, that's also biblical. Those who abide in him in the same way Noah and his family abided on the ark, yes. Jesus says, those who make their home with me will never die and things like that. But more than that, Jesus said, those who abide in him also are to come together, be together, and float above the killing water. See how that hangs together? 
That's why where we worship is called a nave. Some of you know that. In old English, the way it's spoken, the church, church architecture, it's a nave. You know where nave comes from, right? What do you think? A navy? Go deeper than that. It comes from navel. You know, a lot of people think you got your belly button just because when God created you on the heavenly assembly line, you came down and God poked you and said, done, done, done. <laughs> I just thought of that joke. just popped in my head. <laughs> Parents, tell your children that's not what it's all about. <laughs> your navel, right? Your navel was your lifeline, your umbilical cord to your mama. Nave, we're in the nave, boat, navy. We're called to be a hospital ship, and again, it is of God. A hospital ship that is in motion, a hospital ship that moves, a hospital ship that goes. That's what we're called to be. And I'm also going to remind you of... of, of about three really important points to keep in mind about being a hospital ship. Okay, I think they're very important. It's to remember that we are called to be a hospital ship. This is USS uh, Mercy. There's also the hospital ship, United States Sailing Ship of Comfort. And um, I can't remember what the other one's name, but it doesn't matter. There's like three big hospital ships in the United States Navy. Has anybody ever laid eyes on one of these? You ever seen one in person? Well, let me tell you what it's like. I saw one in 1987. I was with a buddy out in San Diego, and uh, we came around the curve or over a hill, whatever it was. It was the first time I'd ever seen an ocean-going ship in my life. And I, I, it was either mercy or comfort, and it was sitting in the blue waters of the Pacific Ocean. And I could not believe that human beings could build something that big. It was awesome. Awesome, amazing, blue water, white ship. This is a hospital ship, and that's what we're to be. And so a couple of key points to keep in mind. We are not called to be a cruise ship. Remember that? Now, I've also seen cruise ships. I saw a cruise ship when I was down in Tampa several weeks ago. Um, how many of you have ever been up close to or maybe on a cruise ship? They're, off, they're amazing, aren't they? They're huge. And I'm not putting down cruise ships. They're designed, a cruise ship is designed for what? For entertainment, for relaxation, to entertain you, right? People go on cruises and, and they have like, like 10 buffet meals a day, right? And, and uh, all kinds of stuff to entertain you. And they've got yoga on board. Look at those nice people doing yoga. Doesn't that look fun? And you got people waving goodbye. We're going on a cruise. You're not. <laughs> right? <laughs> See ya. <laughs> you know, that's fine. That's fine. Nothing wrong with the cruise ship. But church, we're not a cruise ship. But part of the problem is, is that churches, churches confuse their role, and many churches think they're a cruise ship. In fact, have you ever known anybody that shopped around to get the very best price on a cruise? Don't raise your hand, but just think about that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, I know people. Uh, several years ago, they talked about how, because of the recession and so forth, they could get these really cheap cruise tickets to go on a cruise. And I said, really? So you paid half price. Did you get half service? Fair enough? Did you? No, they said, no, we paid half price, but we expected full service. Okay, that's fair. But let me tell you again, it doesn't work that way in the church, but many people think it does. I'll give, them a, I'll give the church 100 bucks, 300 bucks a year or whatever, but I expect full service. See, that's a cruise ship mentality. Cruise ship mentality, when it applies to a church, says, you need to entertain me. You need to entertain me. So you need to have a rock and roll band to entertain me. Remember, our band is awesome and great as they are. Amen? They're not here to entertain us. They're here to lead us in worship. Same with 8 o'clock at our 8 o'clock celebration. When we have you know, the organ or piano, it's not to entertain us. It's to lead us in worship. Cruise ship mentality, though, says, oh, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately, pastor? Even though I'm paying discount prices, I expect full service, right? What have you done for me lately? We're not a cruise ship, church. Last week at annual conference, I read a statistic that every year, the United Methodist Church in the United States loses 100,000 members. Are you hearing me? So now we're down to like seven, 17 million, whatever it is. I heard that statistic and I also know statistics about the number of pastors that leave the ministry. That the average tenure after someone goes to seminary and is ordained, the average length of stay for a pastor in the United Methodist Church is about seven years. And you know what I think? I think a lot of it has to do with cruise ship mentality. 
I think we lose 100,000 members a year in the United States after you take into account deaths and births and new members joining and confirmation. You do all that 100,000 minus. I think a lot of it's because of cruise ship mentality. That our churches have come to be looked at and said, well, you know, this is where we go to be served. We pay our admission and we expect to be served. You know, what's interesting is that the United Methodist Church, the United Methodist Church in Africa, have, they have been gaining 200,000 members a year. Hmm. And I'll tell you something about the church in Africa. They don't have a cruise ship mentality. Many times they're worshiping under the trees. You all with me? Something to think about. Because we're not called to be a cruise ship church. We're called to be a hospital ship. And just like we're called to be a, a hospital ship, to go where the hurting is and to heal and to help in the name of Jesus Christ, neither are we called to be a battleship. Here's a photograph of the USS Wisconsin and the smaller ones, the USS Iowa. Okay, Those are real battleships. Now, battleships, anybody ever seen one of those up close and personal? They're amazing. Wow, they're a marvel. And even though I've had soldiers, I had some World War II veterans today say, tell me after worship, they said, boy, during World War II, huh, those battleships.